All right, we got the Jeep back in the shop, uh, giving everything a really good going over. So we've got a couple hundred miles on these tracks now, and uh, even aside from the tracks, I like to go through everything as much as I can because a failure with this thing and the places it ends up is no good for anyone. So giving everything a good once over, twice over even, and a few things, just making sure we're all good top to bottom. And I have an idea to stop that ice packing problem from happening in these tracks. So before I tell you the solution, or at least what I think might maybe be a solution, let me tell you what the problem was. This is the drive wheel. And what was happening in that super wet, slushy snow that we were in while it was below freezing is that wet, heavy snow was packing all in here in the drive wheel and then freezing hard as a rock because it was so wet with water from the rain. Which, who would ever thought you'd be in four feet of snow and it'd be raining on you at the same time? Very weird weather condition that the chances of being back in are pretty unlikely, but I wanna be ready for it if we are. So as you can see, the teeth are on the track, not on the sprocket. The teeth come into the sprocket and grab right here. That's how the sprocket pulls the track around and makes it go. Well, when this was packing so full of ice, it was snow that was turning to ice and freezing, it was filling this whole area completely solid and it was making it so these teeth couldn't push through it to grab onto these bars. So there's actually a shot in there, I'll see if I can put it back in right here, that you can see it's lifting the track off the uh, sprocket and then the sprocket's starting to slip. So I've been chipping away like crazy with the shovel, like I have to literally like chip it out of there. It's like packed in hard as ice, so I did it. So, all right, so what was happening, the ice just packed so hard, the teeth couldn't push in and we're barely grabbing onto the edge of this bar and then letting that drive wheel slip inside the the sprocket. Now I've been corrected and told it's not called slipping, it's called ratcheting. No, it's called the tracks didn't work and that's a problem. So how do we solve that? Well my idea is take a piece of angle iron and weld it right in there. Maybe even at an angle like this. Now you see it does not have to be touching the sprocket, it doesn't have to be touching the inside. It's actually going to clear everything and it can clear it by a good bit. It doesn't have to be that close. Now the two things that'll do is either one, scrape it out completely and leave a void all the way around here or it'll just break all that up so it's super loose in there. Either way is perfectly fine because then when the teeth try to come in from the backside here, even though there is a layer of ice right here, when the teeth come in from the backside and try to push in, they have somewhere to push that ice into and then can grab on like normal. That is my plan for upgrading these tracks. Like I said, the chances of being in that condition and situation again very, very low, but I rarely get to choose when I have to go out and get someone. And if it's a search and rescue type job, like the first night we went to go get Johnny, uh, failure or saying we'll wait till there's a better weather is really not an option. You have to go. So I want to be prepared for that condition if we run into it. And I think this is the fix for it. But before we get too crazy with all of that, look what I found. I bent up a couple of bogey wheels. So... That one's bent pretty good. This one, this one's bent too. That one's a little bit bent. That one's good, good. Is that one a little bit too? I think so, so we'll change that one too. That's uh, four bogey wheels. Now I do carry spare bogey wheels just in case and I have enough to replace this and then some, so that's not a big deal, but they're like 25, 30 bucks a piece, so that sucks. Okay, I don't know what I hit, but a pretty good gouge in the side of these two. And this one, which was the, the not the front front one, but the front on the ground one. This is the first one that's uh, making ground contact, really. It is bent super good. So, I'm not sure what I hit. I checked around the track pretty good. I didn't see any damage to the track itself, which that's where it can become a real problem, but... I uh, got those swapped out. Everything should be good now. Check the rest, didn't see anything. So hopefully that's the only damage we got so far.
All right, so we got our scraper bars welded in. This is just a very quick and dirty trial. This is definitely no like finished top of the line products. So it's basically like prototype. I'm just throwing it in there to see if it even works. So what I did is just got a piece of angle in there that is just off of the drive wheel and just off of the inside flange. And trust me, I very much thought about angling it and making it a scoop so that as the material comes around like this, it gets scooped out off over to here. But I realized that's pointless for a few reasons. One, it just doesn't need to do that. Two, on these front tracks, there's a wall of snow right here. So if this is trying to scoop material out, there's nowhere for it to go. So I made it easy and just forgot that whole idea. So what this is gonna do is as the material fills up in here and comes around, because this is the forward direction, when it gets down to here, this is basically just gonna break it up. So that should stop this whole area from just packing solid hard with ice, which stops the teeth from being able to actually come in and grab the bar, which makes the sprocket slip. Now I have the same basic thing on the inside. It's just notched right there to clear the rotor, but same idea inside and outside of that center flange. It's got these bars that are just going to break everything up and uh, hopefully let the teeth be able to push in because got an ice cube in there. So I'm only doing the fronts because the fronts are the ones that are plowing through snow and creating that fresh path pushing through the back ones by the time they get there already have a path to travel through. And like we saw up there the other day, the backs weren't clogging up at all. They were completely fine. It was all in the front track. So just going to do it to the front, see if it works. I said the chances of running into that scenario again are pretty low, but hopefully this helps if we do. Now we make her nice and pretty like it never happened. All right, got the Jeep pulled out. Got the trailer pulled in because I have to do a little welding on that fender because I ran it over with the Jeep. Okay, it's much later in the day now, as you can see, because I had to like go to work and, you know, make money type of thing. But back to the trailer. Okay, as you can see, this whole piece broken. This piece bent. So how we fix that, first we hit it with a hammer. Then we grind it with the grinder. Then we ratchet it with the ratchet strap. Oh yeah, that's gonna work. And then we weld it with the welder. Now we spray with the spray paint. Ooh, so nice and warm. When it's this hot, like you're basically powder coating. It's totally the same thing. Okay, as you can see, the truck is in the shop, which means the trailer's out of the shop because they both don't fit at the same time. And the truck is in the shop because we are gonna be installing this dash cam. This company here, Asdome, I'll put a link down below there in the description. Uh, they reached out to me, asked if I had a dash cam. I said, I do not. They said, well, you should, and I agreed with them, so they sent me one out. They did not send me the peanut butter m ms though. I had to buy that with my own money. So we're gonna get this little guy installed and uh, hopefully it works. Hey, why does my light go out? So, as you can see, we're no longer in the shop. We're outside in my driveway because I was just editing the footage to make this video and realized I filmed the entire rest of the video in time-lapse mode because I forgot to switch the camera back. I'm not good with technology, but what I said really quickly in time-lapse mode was how easy this camera was to install. It's literally just stick it on the window, run the wire to power. And if you're wondering, why I stuck it over here on the passenger side, it's so that when I'm sitting in the driver's seat, I can't see it. Because I already have this screen bright in my face all day, which I hate. I don't want that one bright in my face too. So from the driver's seat, not even there. And for those of you who asked about this, all this is is a digital gauge uh, display. It's not a tuner, it's not anything like that, it's just digital gauges and it shows a bunch more information like transmission fluid temperatures, intake air temperatures, stuff like that that's more important when you're towing, which I do a lot of with this truck. Now as far as the camera, 
uh, I said a whole lot of things about it really good. Like I'm impressed that they actually include the SD card. I've never seen a dash cam include that. So that was nice. They also included a bunch of little 3M wire clips so that if you don't have somewhere good to tuck the wire in, you can actually put little wire mounts around and run it nice and clean. I just ran mine underneath the headliner there, down through that pillar there, down under the dash over here, off this way behind the glove box. And what I did that I'm not happy about and am gonna change is I just ran it over here and cheated and plugged it right into this power port right here. The one nice thing about their plug though is it has a USB port in the end, so I didn't lose the use of that power port. I can still use it to charge stuff. But what I'm going to do is get another power port and wire it up down there under the dash so that this is tucked up down there and you never even know anything is there. The reason I just cheated and ran it to here for now is because it was getting close to dinner time and I wanted to make sure I had dinner with the family. So I just ran it into there for now and I'll look at that wire and it'll bug me for a couple days until I wire in another power port. And if you're saying just cut the wire and run it positive and negative, you don't need to wire in a whole other power plug. Yeah, I tried that before with another dash cam and turns out that plug is a voltage converter that steps down the voltage to whatever the camera runs on and then it doesn't work. So I ruined a uh, camera by doing that. So I'm not gonna do that again. I'll just wire in a power plug. Another nice thing about this camera is it Wi-Fi's to your phone. So you can watch the footage and all that back on your phone, save footage to your phone, uh, stuff like that instead of having to try to watch it back on that little screen. So overall, uh, very happy with the camera because it came with way more than I've ever seen come with a dash cam and uh, it's a dash cam. It, it seems to work. If it dies, I'll let you know. But whoever's riding over there is probably gonna have to be the one to let you know because I can't see it from this side. So anyway, this was a productive day other than the, the whole last bit of filming thing. Uh, got our hopefully fix for the Jeep tracks done even though they weren't really broke. It was just a, a conditions we were in thing. So but hopefully that helps we run into that condition again. Uh, we got the fender on the trailer fixed. We went and actually did some real work for once and I uh, got dash cam installed. So yeah, good day. And uh, now I'm gonna run back inside, finish editing this whole thing, get it uploaded so you guys can see it in the morning and uh, it's gonna be it for this one. So thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.